Good morning, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath. Let us ask our Heavenly Father for his guidance. As we open the words of his prophet, and we open his word to understand what he has set before us, and that which we need to understand for this time of our history. Shall we now ask his guidance in prayer? Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for these words of admonition, for this opportunity we have to come before you to study the word of your prophets. We ask now, Father, that our minds may be opened. We also ask, Father, for your forgiveness of our sins. Direct us now. Please guide us so that we may understand, that we may under accept, and we may live by the admonitions that you have provided. <laughs> may your angels attend us today so that we may breathe the very atmosphere of heaven. May our minds be opened so that your guidance becomes clear. We thank you for those that can join with us today in this meeting. For those that will join later and view this in the recordings, bless us each one, direct us so that your will is done. For this, Father, we ask, for this we pray, and this we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Okay, now this last week we started, and I'm gonna I'm gonna reopen this one document. We have begun the study now on Zechariah chapter four. Now, it's interesting to me as we began opening this that there are so many quotations that Sister White had chosen to use in the book of Zechariah, especially in chapter 4. There is much here for us to consider. There is much here for us to understand. Now, we began with this, and we're only going to read a short portion from this before we go on to these other documents. But all of these documents are going to help, in a way, set the table for the feast that we are about to have. And there will be a lot for us to address and to discuss There are men who stand in the pulpits as shepherds, professing to feed the flock. I believe a lot of us have seen this over the years. <clears throat> but the sheep are starving for the bread of life. There are long drawn out discourses largely made up of the relation of antidotes. But the hearts of the hearers are not touched. The feelings of some may be moved. They may shed a few tears, but their hearts are not broken. The Lord Jesus has been present when they have been presenting that which was called sermons. But their words were destitute of the dew and the rain of heaven. They evidenced that the anointed ones described in Zechariah, here we see chapter 4, had not ministered to them, that they might minister to others. When the anointed ones empty themselves through the golden pipes, 
the golden oil flows out of themselves in the golden bowls to flow forth into the lamps, to the churches. This is the work of every true devoted servant of the living God. The Lord God of heaven cannot approve much that is brought into the pulpit by those who are professedly speaking the word of the Lord. They do not inculcate ideas that will be a blessing to those who hear. There is, a che there is cheap, very cheap fodder placed before the people. So, what do we see when we see cheap fodder? Is this the type of food that leads others to become strengthened? When the speaker shall, in a haphazard way, strike in anywhere, as the fancy strikes in, when he talks politics to the people, he is mingling the common fire with the sacred. Who was it that brought the common fire into the tabernacle? Uh, those are the sons of, of Aaron. Yeah, Nadab and Abihu. Do we in any way wish to become like Nadab and Abihu? What happened to yeah. Nadab and Abihu? God was struck dead. dead. They were struck dead. <clears throat> he dishonors God. He has not real evidence that God, from God, that he is speaking the truth. He does his hearers a grievous wrong. He plants seeds which will strike their fibrous roots deep, and they spring up and bear poisonous fruit. How dare men do this? How dare they advance ideas when they do not know certainty whence they came or that they are the truth? Mm -hmm. Will our brethren bear in mind that we are living amid the perils of the last days? Read Revelation in connection with Daniel. Teach these things. Let discourses be short, spiritual, and elevated. Let the preacher be full of the word of the Lord. Let every man who enters the pulpit know that he has angels from heaven in his audience. And when these angels empty from themselves the golden oil of truth into the heart of him who is teaching the word, then the application of the truth will be a solemn, serious matter. So, here she's giving us an example where this golden oil is coming from. Are we in any way to set aside words that come from on high? No. <clears throat> the angel messengers will expel sin from the heart unless the door of the heart is padlocked and Christ is refused admission. Christ will withdraw himself from those who persist in refusing the heavenly blessings that are so freely offered them. Is this the condition that we wish to accept for ourselves? Not at all. The Holy Spirit is doing its work on the hearts, but if the ministers have not first received their message from heaven, <clears throat> if they have not drawn their own supplies from the refreshing, life-giving stream, how can they let that flow forth which they have not received? <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, can we give freely of the living water 
if we have not received it? No. Can we give forth living water if we are not studying according to Miller's rules? What a thought that hungry, thirsty souls are sent away empty. A man may lavish all the treasures of his learning. He may exhaust the moral energies of his nature and yet accomplish nothing because he himself has not received the golden oil from the heavenly messengers. Therefore, it cannot flow forth from him, imparting spiritual life to the needy. The tidings of joy and hope must come from heaven. Learn, oh, learn of Jesus what it means to abide in Christ. <clears throat> If the Christian minister receives the golden oil, he has life. And where there is life, there is no stagnation and no dwarfed experience. There is constant growth to the full stature of Christ Jesus. If we have a deep growing experience in heavenly things, we walk with the Lord as did Enoch. Instead of consenting to the propositions of Satan, there is most earnest prayer for the heavenly anointing that we may distinguish the right, the heaven born from the common. If we are fighting in the strength of the mighty one, we are on the side that will win at last. In the end, we shall conquer the greatest work. The most perilous scenes are before us the deadly conflict we must meet. Are we prepared for it? God is still speaking to the children of men. He is speaking in many different ways. Will they hear his voice? Will we place our hands confident, confidingly in his and say, lead me, guide me? How often are we doing this today? How often are we setting pride and self aside so that we are being led by the omnipotent one? This is a great enterprise for this part of the country. Our school being established here demands that we arise and build. This is a great enterprise for this part of the world. Our movement being established here demands that we arise and build. We cannot present to the Lord any meager offering. What is the best offering we can present to him? Obedience. Obedience. Are we not the best offering that can be made? Can we in simplicity and humility not come before him and be willing to do Whatever he leads us to do. Yes. We want when this work is done. To have done our best. According to the light God has given. We want to hear from the Lord the word of approval. As did the remnant who obeyed the voice of the Lord. Their God coming to them through Haggai the prophet. When they came and did the work in the house of the Lord of hosts. Haggai 114. The word of approval came, I am with you, saith the Lord. Here in Haggai, the Lord has said, I am with you. And what does Christ tell us in a similar vein?
does he not say, I am with you until the very end of the world? Oh, man. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. My house shall be built in it, saith the Lord of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. Zechariah 1.16 Chapters 2, 3, 4, and 5 are chapters appropriate for our study. We are to learn our lessons from these chapters, for history will be and is being repeated. Now, this document was written in 1897. In what tense is this sentence written? Is this telling us that this history has already been repeated and that it's just dry history for us? Or is this something that she is saying is yet to be repeated and is to be relevant for us today? We need to care, consider carefully where we are at this time. And as it said in the chat, this is present simple tense. It is speaking for us today. Do you agree? Yes. Amen. Now, letter 108, 1898, written 25th of November of 1898. This letter was published in Second Sermons and Talks, 130 to 134. To the brethren and sisters in Rockhampton. And as we may consider, to the brethren and sisters today in the movement. How gloriously apparelled those who claim to believe the truth might be <clears throat> if they would forsake their own ways and take the Lord's ways. Under the sway of the King of Peace will be seen a most pleasant change from the present. When those people who claim that they know and understand the truth, see the truth, must sanctify the entire man, his mind, his thoughts, his hearts, and his strength. His vital powers will not be consumed upon his own lustful practices. These must be overcome or they will overcome him. Read the third chapter of 1 Corinthians, for it contains a lesson for the church in every place. The apostle says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? God. <clears throat> And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy? For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in his own craftiness. 1 Corinthians 16 through 19. What? 
Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. The word of God presents before us the parable of the ten virgins, five of whom were wise and five were foolish. The wise virgins took oil in their vessels with their lamps. This was the oil of grace. The prophet Zechariah brings this into view. Read the fourth chapter carefully. Over these next several weeks, we are going to be going over the fourth chapter of Zechariah. There are many admonitions that Sister White has given. These admonitions are for our benefit today. And the angel that spoke with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. And he said unto me, what seest thou? <clears throat> and I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick all of gold and a bowl upon the top of it and his seven lamps thereon and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof and two olive trees by it one upon the right side of the bowl, and one upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake with the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? And the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Here then is the strength of every child of God. He is to feel that the only power that can heal him is found in God. He must place himself in a right relation to God if he would make a success of any of his human plans. This is the privilege of the church of God in every age. If she will put her trust in God, she will advance, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Here again, here is Sister White repeating a very specific admonition, a very impactful verse for us today. Who art thou, O great mountain? Satan is constantly at work to make as forbidding as possible the establishment of the kingdom of God in our world. There will be difficulties to obstruct the work of God, for Satan, through his masterly power, will use unconsecrated hearts to present the characters of the professed people of God to the world as a stumbling block. The precious truths which they hold are not practiced in their lives. While there are those who will advance, there are others who think so much of their individual selves that they cannot see that which needs to be done at the right time. There is no harmony of spirit or of action. They magnify the difficulties. But as those who seek to carry out God's plans advance, the great mountain becomes a plain. Who art thou, O great mountain? 
before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, grace, grace unto it. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 7. Now, is there a question here as to the symbol of this mountain? What are we to do? How are we to go forward? Is she not clear when she says that we are to go forward harmoniously? We are to be joined together. Can we afford disunity? Can we afford to have strife and conflict among us? Strength in numbers. There is strength in numbers, yes. But are we not also to have unity of spirit? Yeah, definitely. The prophet continues, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundations of this house. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hands of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run true to and fro through the whole earth. Zechariah chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. The work will go forward in Queensland if those who claim to believe the truth will sanctify themselves through the truth and will seek to adorn the doctrine that they claim to believe by revealing to the world that which the truth has done for them. As this was written in 1898, is this also not truth for us today, where Queensland can re represent this movement? All the powers of darkness represented by the great mountain will melt away as God's people move forward with the mind of Christ. So what is she saying here that this great mountain represents? Powers of darkness. Yes, the powers of darkness. I charge my brethren and sisters in Rockhampton to be doers of the word and not hearers only. God calls upon you to have a heart open to receive the oil of grace. Satan is not to be permitted to sow the seeds of unbelief in the hearts of those who claim to believe the truth, who say, we cannot do this, we cannot do that, who exalt every molehill into a great mountain of difficulty. These are no difficulties, but that which unsanctified, unconsecrated hearts create. When self is hid in Christ in God, we shall draw in even cords together. Brothers and sisters, if we accept that Christ has overcome the world, then why are we complaining? The truth of the third angel's message is bound to triumph. And those who purify their souls from all defilement will triumph with it. How can we respond to this promise? Is this movement not being raised up 
to give the third angel's message in spirit and in truth. What say you today? Well, yeah, that's the Please complete. Go ahead, Theodore. Go ahead. When the human agent will give up his own important ideas in regard to himself, when he will bear in mind that he is working in sight of the universe of heaven, then his piety will be sweet and fragrant. <clears throat> it will not be of that kind which tastes so strong of the dish, his own human feelings and attributes. True piety is power. But sin is the weakness and the ruin of souls who claim to be Christians. Are we sinning when we doubt the word of God? Yes. Yes, yes, yes we are. So if we choose to doubt God, we are turning away from the blessings that he offers. Or doubt his messengers too. Agreed. The prophet continues. Then answered I and said unto him. What are these two olive trees on the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him. What be those two olive branches through the two golden pipes, empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones, which stand before the Lord of the whole earth. Zechariah 4, verses 11 to 14. Here is the explanations of the olive trees. They take of the Holy Spirit of God and empty the holy oil out of themselves into the clean, pure, sanctified souls that are prepared to receive it. So can we then see that the clean, pure, sanctified souls are the bowls? That are being represented in this chapter. <clears throat> Apparently. Okay. This is the kind of oil that the wise virgins had. Oil that one could not communicate to another. Each individual must prepare his soul for himself. Through humbleness of mind. By wearing Christ's yoke and learning of him are we to continue carrying the burdens that we have brought upon ourselves the burdens of sin would, would, um, Dwight would that also um, that previous quote would that also go with um, Revelation 11 verse 3 Read that verse for me, please, brother. Well, it's actually four, three and four, I think. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand and two hundred and three spawn days, clothed in south cloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. So here, the pioneers would have compared this portion of Revelation and stated that these were the Old and the New Testament. If we are accepting of the Word of God, are we not then eating His flesh 
and drinking his blood from the words that are given in both the Old and the New Testament. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Yep. Amen. When the people of God in Rockhampton, when the people of God in the church and the movement <clears throat> shall understand their position, they will commence the work over against their neighbor's house. Right? Is that not what she says? That's what she's saying. What she said directly to see if we are paying attention. When the people of God shall understand their position, they will commence the work over against their own house. And they will find in doing this work that they have no time nor disposition to become church tinkers. They will engage in a work of decided reformation that they may be purified and made white. What is the church that needs to be purified and made white? I'm sorry, Dwight. Uh, what is the what is church tinkling tink tink tinkers? Tinker, yeah. Someone that is never satisfied and always trying to change things within a church, within a movement. Okay. Those uh, that are <clears throat> those that are stepping off the platform that are saying, this isn't right, that isn't right, this needs to change. Thank you, sir. Yes, brother. But does that help you understand it? Yes, it does. So what is the church that needs a decided reformation what is the church that needs to be purified and made white? Well, each each one of us, but when you say that, you know, people shouldn't be complaining and saying this needs to change and that needs to change. Well, sometimes things do need to be changed, but it's within us mainly. When we're pointing a finger at someone or something how many fingers are pointed back at ourselves three here again <clears throat> if we are engaged in a work of decided reformation if we are then committed to God so that we may be purified and made white, are we then part of the church of Laodicea? That, that yes, we are. My brethren, you have no time to fill your mouths with arguments to prove that someone is doing wrong. How many times in how many meetings has someone chosen to argue or say that someone else is doing wrong in pointing the fingers at the supposed wrongdoer? Three fingers are pointed back at ourselves. It's time that we accept our sin for what it is. Leave Satan to do his own work of accusing. Have you ever thought of that? We're not here to accuse our brothers and sisters. 
Because who is the accuser of the brethren? That would be Satan. So when we're accusing someone, are we not doing Satan's work? Yeah, we're working on his behalf at that point. Whose banner are we standing under? Well, if when we do do it? that, it would be Satan's banner. Do not furnish him with arguments to show the defects in your brethren and your sisters. All have come far short of the glory of God. Is there any of us that can even approach the glory of God? Not at all. Not at all. Amen. Our individual powers need to be elevated, to be purified, sanctified, and then the moral taste will be changed. The scent of self will not spoil our influence. All of our talents are to be cherished as a precious entrusted gift. They are to help us to meet the very highest standard. Every effort should be made to bring other minds under the power of truth. All work in business lines should be done on scriptural lines. The tact that the Lord has given us should be used not to defraud, but to encourage holiness under the Lord. Of one whom the Lord chose to do a certain work, he said, I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting of stones, to set them in the carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. Exodus 31, 3 through 5. Here we have assurance that from God comes the talent of wisdom to do the work that he has appointed. Read Exodus 31, verses 6 to 11. There was no need for any man to be exalted in the manner. It was the Holy One of Israel who had commissioned these men to do this work and who had given them wisdom to accomplish it after his own plan. The reason there is not increased capabilities is because the powers God has given are not put into exercise. Who is she speaking about here? If we're not putting our talents to work. Men stop short of seeking wisdom and knowledge of how to do the work with readiness of mind. In our homes, on our premises, there is not that tact and ingenuity, that sharp discernment seen would lead us to make the most of our possessions. Those who are willing to sink down into a low common level greatly displease God. Parents who follow this course are a dishonor to God for they carry their children with them. Many youth are compelled to work against inherited evils in this direction, and frequently they never recover from the abuse placed upon them through a perverted education at home. Parents and children have to eat the bitter fruit of wrong ideas, of wrong plans. Whole families become non-entities, hopeless of reform. They need not to be so but they do not have in them the traits of character necessary to embrace the inherited and cultivated tendencies 
these slack, untidy habits. If they would take themselves in hand, they could say, I will not sink down to this low level. I will arise. I will make diligent efforts. I will not be pushed downward by circumstances. I will not fail nor be discouraged. Question in the chat. Yes. What is the low common level? Well, as an example, if we say that God is love, and he desires that none should be that none should perish, but that all should have everlasting life. Is this saying that there are none that will perish? Is this saying that all are going to be saved? No, it does not. So if we're going to lower the bar and say that our characters do not need to change because God loves us so, is that not an example of a low level? Yes. Does this answer the question that was being presented? Okay. To every man is given his work. Every has a place in the eternal plan of heaven. Brothers and sisters, consider that right now. Each of us are given work from God. Each has a place in the eternal plan of heaven. It is the duty of fathers and mothers to overcome their own lawlessness, their untidy habits. Truth is of great value and needs to be brought into the character building. Those who have the truth, the love of the truth in their hearts, will make any and every sacrifice that this truth may have the first place in everything. God has given to every man his measure of faith, and each is to walk in faith. He is to show that he has that faith that will rely upon God for help. So if we are to rely upon God, for help, why are so many so quick to decide to rely upon man? As God has given to every man his measure of faith, he is to put it into exercise. What does it mean to exercise faith? Uh, it's to do. It simply means uh, if uh, every word that is coming from God, we have to do it, not just uh, reading it. Did Moses exercise faith? Yes. What about Elijah? Oh, yeah. John the Baptist? So, Moses, who feared to go back into Egypt, exercised faith that he was being led of God. Elijah stood before the children of Israel on Mount Carmel. He gained an amazing victory over the priests of Baal and the priests of the grove. Yet, he was still afraid 
of Jezebel. And then John the Baptist, who preached the word unfailingly at the Jordan, but in prison chose to ask, are you the one or should we look for another? To every man is to let his light shine. Whole families might be helped and blessed if parents would find something for their children to do. Why are not ministers and teachers more explicit on this subject that means so much to physical health and spiritual soundness? If the boys and girls of the family should feel that they are part of a home firm, they would strive to keep the premises cleansed from every unpleasant sight. Instruction in these lines should be given line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Do we not hear this in how we are to study? Oh, yeah. Yes. So are we not being shown here that we are to put this method of study into practice? There are those in our churches who have much to say in regard to Christianity, but in whose presence we should always be guarded, for they dismiss the word of God from their business transactions. When there is buying and selling to be done, God is not by their side. The enemy is on the ground, and he takes possession of them. Christian brotherhood and love is laid a sacrifice on the altar of greed. God, heaven, the precepts of Jehovah, his oft-repeated injunctions are obliterated from the soul. They know not what it means to practice the principles laid down in the word of God. They sell their souls for unlawful gain. So thick is the veil which blinds their eyes that they can only see the fraudulent game. So hard is the incrustation that envelops the heart that it feels not the love and tenderness and pity of Christ for their fellow men. The holiness and truth of God are shut out from their souls. Is this the condition that we wish to find ourselves today? Will the people of God frown down all this corrupting influence? Will they give their hearts to God? Will they deal mercifully with their fellow men? Will Seventh-day Adventists bear in mind that they cannot swerve from the truth in their dealings with their fellow men, that they cannot violate justice or let go their integrity without forsaking God? Anything that dishonors him will never benefit you. The man who expects to prosper by violating the eternal principles of righteousness is laying up for himself a harvest that he will not care to reap. He places himself in the enemy's ranks and brings degradation upon himself. Although for a time he may seem to prosper, he can never help to compose the family of God. These warnings are rather direct. Any comments so far?
I arose at 3 a.m. I am asking my Heavenly Father for a larger portion of his Holy Spirit. Without me, said Christ, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. If we move forward in any service without the earnest seeking of wisdom from God, we shall make failures. But if we keep the mind stayed upon Christ, which is our efficiency, he will be strong in his strength and the power of his might. Zechariah 3 and 4 need to be carefully studied, for there is much in these chapters that is essential for us in these days. Chapter 4. In figure, presents the discouragement that we may have a strength not of our own. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. This is a lesson all have to learn who have any connection with the sacred work of God. Are we to go forward under our own power? Are we to go forward under our own wisdom? No, we are not. Satan will furnish an abundance of speculative projects that are not after God's order but are inspired by man's ambitious devising. Thousands of dollars may be spent in traveling. In this way, money is consumed, but it accomplishes little. The only right way is to stop devising wonderful plans that absorb means to create Inventions that God does not inspire and devote the Lord's means and your God-given faculties to setting in operation a work that will reach the neglected ones, the oppressed, and those that cannot rise of themselves. Dr. Kellogg is doing a work which, if the churches will be converted, they can undertake in a limited degree. It gives opportunity for many to minister for God. <clears throat> there are families within the shadow of your own doors in whom you have not shown sufficient interest to lead them. Excuse me. There are families within the shadow of your own doors in whom you have not shown sufficient interest to lead them to think that they are cared for their souls. I entreat you to read the third and the fourth chapters of Zechariah. If these chapters are understood, if they are received, a work will be done for those that are hungering and thirsting for righteousness, a work that will be an advance work. A work that means go forward and upward. Here are the requirements of God to his people. The Ten Commandments express the will of God and the duty of all men. And when the hearts of men are thoroughly converted, they are brought into perfect harmony with the attributes of God. For this is always the effect of divine grace. So if this is the effect of divine grace, is this not the oil that is being imparted to the soul? Stands the reason. Okay. So if we are accepting of the will of God and we are abiding by the Ten Commandments and our hearts are being converted that they 
are brought into perfect harmony with the attributes of God. We are then receiving this golden oil. In this harmony with God is spiritual life and efficiency and, and power. There is no, there is to be no divorcing of the interest of those who believe sacred truths to take up and confederate with men of the world or men of the church whom the world has converted to their worldly methods and plans. What does it mean to be confederate? Unionized. Repeat that, please. To be in union with something. Does this also mean to be in league with someone? Yes. Right. Are we not given an admonition? Are we not told that we are not to be in league with the nations around us? That's what it says. Make no leagues. So if we are to make no leagues, we are then to understand that the only one with whom we are to have a covenant relationship is God himself, right? Well, that's the way it works, doesn't it? You have to have that relationship before you can have that, that kind of relationship with anything else, anybody else. Right. When men who have the light of truth and do not walk in that light, but follow the sparks of the fire of their own kindling, they shall lie down in sorrow. God would have his people look to him and derive their strength and power from him and not trust those who are not obedient to his commandments. It is the will of God that men should be set apart to minister in sacred service in various lines for him, to preach the word of God as did John, preparing the way of the Lord. So which John is being presented here? John the Baptist. Exactly, John the Baptist. There must be no binding up in confederacies with men Bind up in covenant relation with God. Can a statement be made any clearer? So the Lord is the shield of his people. He alone must be our strength, our sufficiency. He says to his people, fear not. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Revelation 1, 17 and 18. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that night, that right early, Psalm 46, verse 5. Our relation with God must be of a distinct character as a people waiting and watching for the Son of Man to come in the clouds of heaven. The church whom God loves and keeps as his commandment-keeping people is as precious as the apple of his eye. The Lord saith, Do you not know your privileges? Have you faith in God? Have you a living connection with God? Do we sense his love as light in the morning, in the midst of the church militant, feeding each lamp with the golden oil of his grace, of his love? Zechariah 4, Deuteronomy 10, 19 to 22.
it's interesting to me to see how many other books of the Bible she is choosing to use in relation with Zechariah 4. Manuscript 134, 1908. <clears throat> As you can see here, this document, written in 1908, written 115 years ago, was not available or printed until 2015, which was 107 years after its original publishment. There is a great work to be carried on in the, in the heart, in the life, and in the character. All those who appreciate the redemption of the soul by the great gift will labor diligently to bring many perishing sinners to the belief of the truth. This, I am instructed, is to be the great burden of every soul that is connected with me in doing my work. The Lord has not been glorified in the planning, enlarging, and arranging in Washington. When his word is fully appreciated, there will be a most decided change and reformation. There will be much less of man's planning and devising that are weaving in threads of self-planning, and the Lord will not accept. Thus saith the Lord, men are short-sighted and have given a wrong impression of my work of my great work that is to be done. They are blinded and cannot read from cause to effect. If wheat is desired, it is sown in seed and scattered abroad. Then heaven waters the seed. It is not to be collected in one large parcel, but must be sent from the one who desires it to multiply by scattering. As the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I bear, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attendant to the prayer that is made in this place. Second Chronicles 7, 12 to 15. We are also told to read verses 16 to 22. I write this because I am charged to do this. Will they take heed? So, would someone please read Second Chronicles 7, 12 to 15, and someone else read Second Chronicles 7, verses 16 to 22. I read... Second Chronicles 7, verses 12 to 15. Wonderful. Thank you. 
because there is, there is a heading saying that God answers Solomon's prayer. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, then will then we lie here from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Fifteen. Now mine eyes shall be open, and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Okay. Who can read Second Chronicles verses 16 to 22? I'll read it if it's all right. Please. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me as David my father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I stick st 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 I don't know what that word is. St st Okay. Establish. To establish, I'm sorry. To no establish the throne of thy kingdom according to, according as I have co con <laughs> converted with, conversed with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. But if ye turn away and forsake my statue and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. Then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land which I have given them, and this house which I have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight and make and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house which is high, which be an astonishment to everyone that passes by it, so that he shall say, Why has the Lord done thus unto the this land and unto this house, and it shall be answered, because they forsake the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore has he brought all this evil upon them. Okay, thank you. Are we to listen to these words? Are we to accept these words in our lives today? Will we take heed? God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not have the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. First John 1, 5 to 7. There are some in official places who are not spiritual because they have made, they have many plans to take a course that will appear in their own judgment to be right. 
which they suppose will be for their own advantage to create great things. But the Lord saith, no. You will have your forbiddings on the right hand and on the left, for the Lord has not given any such orders. Every movement must be under the divine dictation, saith the Lord. And you have decidedly retarded the advancement and the growth of the work by your own devising. Are we not asked to come together to study together, to discern together the very words that God has presented for us at this time? How can we do that? If we're taking arbitrary control of meetings and deciding to cast people out, how can we do that when we are criticizing our brothers, when we are standing as in and under the banner of the great apostate? You have retarded the growth of work years in Washington. God calls for you to clear the king's highway and make in the desert a highway for our God. Every ray of light God has communicated in any line is to be permitted to have its place as it has not done for years. Lift up your voice and, and cry, clear the king's highway. Make in the desert a highway for our God. The light of God is to shine forth much more extensively in highways and also in the byways and the hedges. Every soul possible is to come to its brightness and to extend its rays of light in many highways and byways. The eyes are, of many are in need of the heavenly anointing to discern that the world is to be warned and the work should be extended to your individual vicinities and continue its course, gathering the increase to open every place that can possibly be entered. <clears throat> Whose eyes need the heavenly eye salve? Already ours. <laughs> is, this, is this admonition not given to Laodicea? Yeah. Not a dollar of money is to be expended for mere show or for appearance when souls need all the light possible to shine upon the true path that leads to life to eternal life. There are outside parties that, though they do not accept the truth, will aid in the work of the Lord. God will impress souls, men who have means, to help as you press forward to do the good work. God has moved upon outside parties to help in the past, and they will do the same now. Buildings, plain and simple, must be erected in our cities for houses of worship. For the end of all things is at hand. And there are strong forces that will seek to block the way, bringing in side issues. All these things the Lord people have had to meet and press against in their work in the past. They've had to labor with all their powers almost at the sacrifice of their temporal lives for warnings to come to the people to make a change. Exodus 6, 1 through 7. Now, if I'm looking at Exodus 6, 1 through 7, we have a promise. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and to Jacob by the name of God Almighty. 
but my name, Jehovah, was I not known unto them. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians kept in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. And I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will rid you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you with a stretched out arm. And with great judgments did God do what he promised then uh, yeah according to the record will God do what he promises now uh, yeah we are now intensely in earnest and I have a message from the Lord it is a mistake to have a few men to devise and to plan for the whole conference. The voice said, divide and subdivide, for the work of God shall require that men be selected as caretakers ordained to do the work of God. The end is near, and every year Satan is drilling his army to develop strong parties to be ready against the great battle of the last conflict. Habakkuk chapter 2. This is a faint description of reality. Who is wise in the time when the evil shall spring forth? Zephaniah, Zechariah 3 and 4. All these things shall become a living reality. But men in high places, supposing themselves wise, will block the way. A voice was heard clear the king's highway. As we prepare for our studies in these coming weeks, Mrs. White is giving us clear admonitions. One of those admonitions we will be covering this next week. For Mrs. White tells us that we are to carefully examine Haggai chapter 1 along with Zechariah chapter 4. There is much for us to consider. There is much for us to discuss. There is much for us to learn. Now, we have a few minutes remaining today. Are you having any questions with what we have covered? And are there any comments that we should address? Well, in Zechariah 4, 1, where, where the prophet is talking about being awakened as a man out of sleep so that he could hear god and, and really tune into what god was showing him i found it strange because you know when we're asleep we're not supposed to be conscious and yet and yet obviously the prophet was in vision so i figure he must have been in a trance which is similar to a sleep in a way okay. and then i thought of Job 33 14 where it says that God seals the, the instruction of man, will take away all the distractions and seal their instruction. He speaks once, twice, and three times. And that God can tune in, that God can have that person who's receiving the words tune into him clearly, right? So there seems to be a, a kind of state of consciousness where although you're awake, you're awakened in such a spiritual way to receive the spiritual words. I don't know if I'm conveying this right, but it's just it's just a phenomenal state to be in. Right. 
Okay, any other comments or thoughts? Yeah, I have one, Dwight. I was okay. going to um, say um, praise God that um, that Ron is come is um, back, and um, praise God for this meeting, this um, these uh, admonitions. It was interesting to put <clears throat> to be putting this together because so much of what what has been written here, I've had to look to how I could apply it in my own life. So thank you for those comments. So shall we close this meeting with prayer? Loving Father in heaven, we thank you for the time, these words, these admonitions, and these instructions. We thank you for this time that we may learn more of you, that we may be more guided by you, and be more prepared to do that which you would have us to do. Be with us, each one, on this Sabbath. Help us so that that which we do may be according to your will. Forgive us of our sins today, Father. Help us to walk in the newness of life as you would have us to walk with you. For this we thank you. For this, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.